Once you have completed your set of cereal dilutions, the next step in the standard plate count is to spread plate the dilutions onto a solid medium so that you can count the number of colony forming units per mil for each dilution. So again, you need to make sure you're working aseptically. The bench must have been wiped down with disinfectant and you must have your Bunsen on. The first step in doing the spread plate procedure is to label the plates that you're going to put your cereal dilution onto. So remember when labelling your plate, you label it on the bottom of the plate and on the edge or circumference of the plate so that the writing doesn't obstruct the view of what's growing on the actual plate. So you should have four plates. You need to label your plate with the type of medium it is, so NA for nutrient agar, your initials, your first name, middle name and last name, the date, and also the dilution factor that is going to be spread. So we're going to be spreading 10 to the minus 3 up to 10 to the minus 6. So label your first plate 10 to the minus 3. Your second plate 10 to the minus 4. Your third plate 10 to the minus 5. and your last plate, your fourth plate, with 10 to the minus six. When you performed your cereal dilutions, the series started at 10 to the minus one up to 10 to the minus five. You are only going to spread plate from 10 to the minus two to 10 to the minus five. The 10 to the minus one dilution is still going to contain too many cells to be counted. It's going to form a lawn of bacteria on your plate, not individual colonies that can be counted. So you can set that dilution to one side. It's really important to remember that when we're diluting, we're effectively creating another one in 10 dilution. So you will be spread plating 100 microliters of the cereal dilution onto each of the plates. So that means we need to place our correct plate with our correct McCartney bottle with the correct dilution. So our 10 to the minus 2 dilution is going to become a 10 to the minus 3 dilution when we spread plate 100 microliters. Our 10 to the minus 3 dilution is going to become a 10 to the minus 4 on the spread plate. Our 10 to the minus 4 dilution is going to become 10 to the minus 5 on the spread plate and our 10 to the minus 6 5 dilution will become 10 to the minus 6 on the plate. So it helps if you line up the correct dilution with the correct plate. When you're doing spread plates and cereal dilutions you can use the same tip to transfer your dilution onto the, the actual nutrient agar plate. So if we're working from 10 to the minus 5 dilution, from the most dilute down to the least dilute, you can use the same tip because the 10 to the five, minus 5 dilution is going to have far less cells than a 10 to the minus 3 or 10 to the minus 2 dilution. So that's why you can use the same tip for this. So you need to make sure that you've got your pipette that measures 100 microliters. With that pipette, you need to use the yellow tips. And again, you need to work aseptically. So make sure that the Bunsen is always near where you're working. Remember when you labeled the plates, you turned them upside down to label them. You now need to turn them the right way. So starting with your 10 to the minus five dilution, you need to pop the yellow tip onto your pipette and again work aseptically. So you need to release the lid of the bottle, flame the neck, collect a hundred microliters and then transfer that to the surface of your nutrient agar plate, making sure that you lift the lid for only the shortest amount of time possible. 
Using the same tip, you can then move on to your 10 to the minus 4 dilution. Release the lid, flame the neck of the bottle. Collect 100 microliters, flame the neck of the bottle. Replace the lid. And then transfer 100 microliters to the corresponding plate. And continue on for the rest of your dilution series. Using the same tip, working through your dilution series. Once you've transferred your last aliquot of 100 microliters, you can remove the tip into the tip bucket. When spread plating, there are some other key pieces of equipment that you need to use. So spread plating requires a spreader. This is basically a glass hockey stick looking instrument which needs to be sterilised before you actually spread your plates. So to sterilise it, you need to dip it in a bath of alcohol. So this can be a hazard when working with alcohol and the flame, so you need to be very careful when sterilising your hockey stick. So you basically dip it into the ethanol bath, give it a quick swirl, remove it from the bath and give it a quick tap to remove any excess alcohol from the hockey stick. So that ensures when we go to flame it, so we need to make sure the Bunsen is on the blue flame and we wave the hockey stick through the blue flame, the apex, a couple of times, very quickly. So by tapping the excess alcohol off of the hockey stick, that ensures it's not going to drip into the Bunsen and it also ensures it's not going to drip onto the surface of your bench and catch a light. You need to make sure that your hockey stick isn't too hot. You don't need to hold it in the flame for very long. Um, if you do, that will heat up the glass and when you go to spread your solution onto the plate, it will actually kill off the bacteria and it can also dent your agar. So it's not necessary to hold it in the flame for very long. You just want it to burn off the alcohol. The other hazard when working with an alcohol bath is actually returning your hockey stick to the bath when it's hot. That can actually ignite the alcohol and your whole alcohol bath will catch on fire and you don't want that to happen. If the alcohol which is alight does accidentally drip into your alcohol bath, the best way to stop it from burning is to place the lid on. So that will stop the amount of oxygen getting to the alcohol. And you must inform a demonstrator if that happens. So our hockey stick is now sterile. We can spread our dilution. So you want to gently remove the lid and then spread the 100 microliters of cereal dilution across the surface of the plate, rotating with your finger rotating the plate at the same time to ensure that the whole aliquot is actually covering the surface of the plate. You can then set that plate aside and you need to flame your hockey stick to sterilise it again for the next dilution. So give it a tap once you've removed it from the bath. Quickly wave it through the apex of the flame. You may see the alcohol alight. It, the whole hockey stick will turn a blue colour. Let it cool for a couple of seconds and then lift the lid and spread the aliquot across the surface of the plate using your spare finger to rotate the plate at the same time. You can set that plate aside and again sterilise your hockey stick in the alcohol bar. Give it a tap. Quickly wave it through the Bunsen. Let it cool and then spread the aliquot over the surface of the plate using your spare finger to rotate the plate. And you keep doing that until all of your 
cereal dilutions have been spread onto each of the plates. When you complete your last spread plate, make sure that you do sterilise the hockey stick again to remove any unwanted bacteria that may still be on the hockey stick. You can then set that aside at the base of your Bunsen burner. So once you've spread plated each of the dilutions, you need to let them sit for a couple of minutes to allow the solution to absorb and then they're ready to go in the incubator. So remember, when incubating with bacteria, you need to turn your plate upside down so that any condensation that may form on the lid will not drop onto your culture that's on the plate. So turn all of your four plates upside down, place them on top of each other, and then secure them together with a rubber band. And then that stack of plates needs to be placed into the correct box for incubation. Once the plates are incubated, you can then observe the plates and have a look at how many colonies are growing on each of the dilution plates. And you want to check those plates that have between 30 to 300 colonies growing on them. They're the correct dilution plates that you need to use for calculating the colony forming units per meal.